wanting to start milling your grains but don't know where to start. This video is for you. Welcome back if you've been here before or welcome if you are brand new. My name is Felicia and this is Grains and Grids. Here on this channel we talk all things real whole grains from a biblical perspective. I've been milling my wheat for about 12 years now and baking bread and everything that involves flour I mill it myself here at home. And I've been teaching you guys here on YouTube how to do that for about two and a half years now. This video is the second video in a series, Whole Milling 101, to just get back to the basics. So if you watched my first video, if you haven't, I recommend it, but that is basically our why. Why we should be milling our own wheat, consuming real whole grains, that's, that's the big why and you need to go watch it. But if you already know your why and now you're ready to get started, that's what this video is for. You're wanting to get started. You're super excited. I know whenever I first heard Sue Beckert's talk, do not eat the bread of idleness. Um, my husband and I decided, yes, we are doing this. And now what? Well, um, unfortunately, I didn't have YouTube back then um, or many resources. So I had to figure it out on my own. But I'm here to hold your hand. So hopefully you will not have to figure it out on your own from complete scratch. But actually, it's pretty simple what you need. And we're going to be discussing that in this video. First of all, you need a way to grind your grains. Secondly, you need grains and how to store them properly. You need equipment and basic ingredients to make good food. And then fourthly, you need good recipes. First of all, you're wanting to now make your own flour. You want to buy the wheat berries, make your own flour. So how do we get from the wheat berry to the flour? Well, it used to be that you had to have some big massive stone and like a mule or a water wheel to turn the big stones to make that into flour. Or you just had to have your own sort of grinding stone and mill it yourself and do it by hand. Thankfully, technology has come a very long way and we now have wonderful grain mills that we can have right in our house. So of course, the first thing that most people are wanting is an actual grain mill. I do highly recommend an electric grain mill because it's going to be faster, it's going to be easier, but you do also have your hand mills as well, which is going to be slower, but you don't need electricity to run them. Now, I've actually done a video about how to choose a grain mill, and I will link that down below, but there are basically two different categories. You have your stone grind mills like the mock mill, the Como mill, the Nutri-Mill Harvest, and then you also have your impact mills like your wonder mill and your Nutrimill classic um, and they do different things if you're wanting a variety of cracked grains to fine flour you're going to want a stone mill if you're wanting fine flour every time without having to think about it until the end of time amen then an impact mill is the way to go but i did a video all about that but bottom line you need a grain mill if you are unsure if this is something you want to invest in um, then of course you can start with what you have many people have uh, a Vitamix or Blendtec, one of those very powerful blenders, and that can get your grains into fine flour. You can also look at an attachment for a KitchenAid um, mixer if you have one of those. Some people have even used a coffee grinder. The problem with these is they may not actually mill the flour, flour fine enough for bread baking and things like that, so there may be some grittiness to your bread. But hey, start with what you have um, and then look for sales or look for refurbished or used models when it comes to your grain mills but just remember this a grain mill is an investment but it is a tool that is i would say one of the most crucial tools that you need in your house just like we have our ovens and our refrigerators i rank a grain mill up there right with them of probably one of the most important things that i have in my kitchen it's one of those things that if I could, I would give one to every single person getting married because, because you need it. I know all my kids will have one when they get married. <laughs> Second thing you need are, well, your grains. And when you really start looking at wheat berries, you now realize how much variety you now have than just flour from the store. Flour in the store, you have bread flour, all-purpose flour, pastry flour, mm. Uh, and then like, you know, your self-rising flour. But when it comes to actual wheat berries, there is so much variety and you're going to be a little overwhelmed. Like, should I have spelt or kamu, like the ancient grains? Or what is hard red? What is hard white? What's soft white? Winter, spring, wheat, all the things. What do I do? Stop. It's not that difficult. Okay. Just keep 
keep it simple. Um, you just need a hard wheat for your, for your yeast breads and a soft wheat for your baked goods. So your hard wheat, either a hard red or hard white, and then a soft wheat is just, there's one variety, soft white wheat. Start simple. Do not be distracted by the ancient grains and all of those things until you actually start um, getting a better feel and getting more comfortable using freshly milled wheat. So start simple. What I started with was one small bu bucket of hard red wheat and a small bucket of soft white wheat. And now I have an insane amount of grains. <laughs> You also may notice that you cannot walk into Walmart and buy wheat berries. Actually, most stores do not have them. So where do you get them? Thankfully, I've got you covered there as well. Um, you can find sources on my website, grainsandgrit.com slash buy grains. I've got a list, coupon codes for you. It's not an exhaustive list. You can also lo look locally as far as um, any local, um, like small local grocery stores, Mennonite stores, Amish stores, um, things like that, that actually, if you, if you find that they are selling wheat berries that you can get, ask them and most likely they can order them for you in bulk because that is key. Buying in bulk is going to save you so much money, 25 pound bags, 50 pound bags. And don't worry about buying that much because so long as they are stored well, they're going to last for a long time. Just make sure that you, if you're buying them in bags, that you're immediately, when you get them, put them in a good container with a good lid that's going to keep out bugs and moisture. And then they can just sit there. It used to be a 50 pound bag for me, uh, would, you know, it would take me six months to go through. Now I'm going through 40 pounds of grains a month. So trust me, they can sit there and last just fine. This is actually a good time to pause to take a break to mention the sponsor of this video, which is Pleasant Hill Grain. I love Pleasant Hill Grain. You've heard me talk about them before, but they are pretty much, if I was to design a store for us home millers, this would be one of them because they have not only all the grain mills that you could possibly want, but they have multiple varieties of grains and legumes and then the mixers and the yeast and all the ingredients needed, the bread pans, everything for us. It is a one stop shop. Um, I highly recommend checking them out if you haven't already. They also have handy dandy comparison charts for mixers and for grain mills if you're unsure of which one you're wanting to get, as well as everything just shipping to your house, free shipping with orders over $70 or $75, which is super easy to do. They have excellent customer service and bonus, you're supporting a small family company and not the big businesses like Amazon or Walmart. So be sure to check out Pleasant Hill Grain. Just go to grainsandgrit.com slash p HG and tell them I sent you. All right. So back to the things that you need. So after you got your grain mill and you've got your wheat berries, other equipment that you may find yourself needing, of course, you just need your basic baking things, measuring cups, measuring spoons, which most people have. You don't have a go to a flea market. I mean, like you can, you can get and borrow them from your mama. So you need like your cookie sheets. Um, and then, you know, your basic ingredients like baking soda, baking powder, and salt. Now, whenever you're actually branching out into bread, there are other things like your basic loaf bread pans that you are needing. And I get questions about this, about what sizes to get. Don't get all crazy with the fancy stuff. So my go-to bread pans, I love the USA pans. They are a safer nonstick option. They're silicone based with an aluminized steel on the inside. Um, and my go-to ones, I love those pans. I don't have to spray them or anything. The loaves come out beautifully. It bakes them well. And I'd use the typical nine inch length. So the pans come out to about nine by five by 2.75 inches. Um, there are three links available that they have. I bought mine at Pleasant Hill Grain. They have all three options available, but I have the nine inch one and it's perfect for my typical loaves that I make. Another one that I love is the Pampered Chef Stone Bread Pan. I love it. I only have one. I'm going to be getting more because it is just awesome. I mean, the, if you do not like the nonstick stuff, I highly recommend the stoneware because it bakes the bread evenly and beautifully. And their loaf pan is a nine by five by three. So if you notice a pattern, you're generally looking for nine inches by five inches by three inches when it comes to your bread loaf pans. And those are a good size to have. 
You also have what's called the Pullman pan. So if you're looking to make that typical long sandwich loaf shape, that is called the Pullman pan. Pleasant Hill Grain also sells it. I love it. Um, it makes the perfect shaped little sandwich loaf. I use the two pound bread size, which is the largest one. They also have a smaller one if you're wanting a smaller loaf. You also need your typical like rolling pins, things like that when it comes to baking bread. So you also have your other fancy bread pans, your baguette pans, your French loaf pans. Don't worry about those until you're getting your basic loaf and getting the hang of things. And then you can see what you like to bake and adding to your collection. Now, what I recommend is possibly having three of these loaf pans um, because especially if you're following my recipe, you can make three about one and a half pound loaves at a time, or you can always just cut the recipe in half do less, but um, I'm always using three loaf pans. Now, the final thing that you always need to keep in hand on stock is, of course, your yeast. And my go-to yeast is instant yeast. I use it all the time. I prefer it over active dry yeast. It's just easier to use, better results, it's faster, so on and so forth. Um, you do want to buy your yeast in bulk. If you're buying those little packets, those little jars from the store, way too expensive. It is so much cheaper to buy them in one pound or two pound packets. Pleasant Hill Grain sells them, Amazon, multiple places, Sam's Club, Costco, you can buy the big packs. The go-to brands that everyone typically likes are SAF, Fleischmann's, and Red Star. Now, what I do like to see with the yeast is that they are vacuum sealed. That way they are shelf stable until I open them. And when I open them, I then just store them in my freezer. And I've never had a problem with yeast going that way. And there was a time where it took me about six months to go through one pound of yeast. Those are the days. They are long gone. <laughs> Now, of course, finally, you've got your grain mill, you've got your wheat berries, you have your basic ingredients and your bread pans, you're ready to go, but what recipe do you use? And that is definitely the final thing that you need. You need some good recipes, and there's not many people out there, especially when I first started, it was Sue Becker with Bread Beckers, and that was it. No one was really talking about um, using freshly milled flour, which is different than all-purpose flour from the store. No one was really talking about that. There wasn't really any many cookbooks or recipes online and things like that. Thankfully now, there are far more options now. More people are um, starting to learn about it and offer these. So you do need good recipes. Of course, I think mine are really good because why would I follow them if they were not good? But of course, I know that they do not work for everyone. But just know that I do have my own recipes. If you just go to grainsandgrit.com slash recipes, I've got a list. I have videos here on my website. I've got a playlist of all the recipes. My simple yeast bread loaf recipe is my go-to bread loaf recipe I use all the time. And all of these recipes I use for my family and they love them. I fed them to other people. So they're tried and true recipes, but bottom line, find your recipe that works and stick to it. So of course there's, there's my recipe. Do know that not only do I have a website and videos, but I also have an elite membership group for supporters of grains and grit. And one of the benefits that they are getting currently are an ex is an extra recipe each month that goes to their email inbox or excuse me, each week I send them out weekly recipes from my own recipe box, from my own kitchen. So you can have even more options with that. Now there are a few cookbooks that I recommend because people now ask me, what cookbooks do you recommend that use freshly milled flour? Um, of course we have Sue Becker's The Home Essential, The Essential Home Ground Flour. This book right here, if you are a newbie, it is perfect. Not only does it give you the whys, you know, and your basic baking knowledge of using freshly milled wheat, but the recipes are simple. They are not these exotic, weird type recipes. They, it is excellent for newbies, for beginners. I highly recommend this one. Another one I recommend uh, is a new one that I've just gotten, which is Grain Mains. Um, this has some very interesting and delicious recipes that are outside of your typical ways of using whole grain. So it's not necessarily breads, but salads, you know, your breakfast, your breakfast porridges, uh, things like that. Very, very interesting recipes, but yet they still seem easy and attainable and not crazy exotic. And then of course, one of considered one of the gurus of bread baking, Peter Reinhardt. He does have one about whole grain breads. 
This one I would recommend if you are really wanting to dive deep to understand how baking works. This is very detailed. Um, so it can be, I would say this probably possibly will be overwhelming for newbies, unless you're one of those people that just really like to dive in and find out all the nuances and all, oh, why does this do this? And how do I do this? Then that's the, some, it's almost like a textbook basically like that, but it's got great recipes in it as well. I know I've learned and a lot of my folding methods from Peter Reinhardt. So that's another great cookbook and all of these will be linked below. Other sources, um, there are bloggers out there, websites that now have fresh and milled wheat recipes. Michael Gropp is one. I did an interview with her. She is wonderful and amazing. And she has a website um, that has tons and tons of wonderful recipes, all using fresh and milled wheat. She also has cakes and just so many things. She also currently has a cookbook coming out as of this video. It is not out yet, but I'm super excited. If it's out, I will try to link it below, but be sure to check her out. I will link her below, but I believe it's just michaelgropp.com um, to view all of her web or all of her recipes. Another great source to have on hand is actually, I've got a free newbie milling guide for y'all. Again, that is linked below, but it has the links to everything. So I've mentioned videos about choosing a grain mill, recipes, things like that. Well, this is a milling guide that walks you through this step-by-step, -step, the steps that you need to take in order to start milling your wheat and links to any and all videos and recipes that I have. It's in one convenient little guide and it's free. So there you go. I hope this video was very helpful. Remember to stop at Pleasant Hill Grain to shop there. If, especially if you're wanting to start off and you don't want to research and find where to buy all the things, just one-stop shop. Just, just go there. So grainsagrit.com slash PhD. And again, download my free newbie guide. Check out our membership group. And as always, I hope you'll have a wonderful week. Thanks for watching this second video and be on the lookout for future videos in our home milling series one-on-one. As always, have a wonderful day. Bye.